Here they come. Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. And we are here with great honors to extend those honors to our graduates who are before us in Table Center. Now, my dear sisters, last night or yesterday morning, a number of our sisters who were in attendance at the baccalaureate mass as well as the graduation ceremony, witness to all that you actually received your degrees. And just to make sure, the rest of us witnessed it right here. And when your name was announced, we stood up and cheered. It blew out the microphone system, but we did cheer you on, on your great accomplishments. Now, that accomplishment came to you from your course of study through Aquinas Institute. You are not finished until you have completed our requirements. <laughs> Therefore, this evening, you have one more final test. <laughs> And we didn't want to tell you ahead of time because I've watched you pace the floor before you had to go do your presentation or figure out how am I going to say what they're going to ask me. And I know you practice for hours with one another. So this is really an unpracticed, true to heart answer to questions that will be asked of you. We have notified your superiors that you may not be leaving because until you can correctly answer the questions given to you, we do not feel that SSND has done a just job. And we will keep working until we have converted you to what SSND is. Okay? Does that sound okay with all of you? Yes, Yen, do you have a question? Yeah. If we cannot pass the exam, what do we do? <laughs> they don't know when they may call on a member of the audience as your lifeline. Okay. And sisters already know. They were warned. They better know the answer. <laughs> so it's part of that community experience. It takes the whole group to make it happen. Time is now completed. The <laughs> clock is ticking. Would you please proceed to the stage? Okay, now I would like to introduce to you Sister Elise, who is going to ask the questions. Please listen carefully to her directions.
First of all, I would like to address the sisters sitting out there looking just so excited and happy to see our graduates. Because I want to share with you the president of Aquinas Institute came up to our pew in the morning. He seemed to know we were Notre Dames, Father Mark Wittig, and he said to us, what a wonderful group of sisters you have with you, and thank you, sisters. So I want to pass that on. Thank you, sisters, for all that you have done for these sisters with us on the stage. So sometimes we just enjoy them so much we don't think about what we do for them or how we are for them, which has given them a wonderful experience this year. So I wanted you to know that first. Okay. Sure. I'm asking you the questions. I hope you, I hope you get the question that I have there. <laughs> Okay, let's start with let's start with Hung. What item did you wish you had packed in your suitcase and didn't when you came to the United States? You get it. What item did you wish you had packed in your suitcase and didn't when you came to the United States? I wish I could bring my parents with me and my family with me. Okay, Han, what was your most memorable learning about ordinary life in America? All right. I have the last question. Hold on here. Just relax, honey. You'll get your turn. <laughs> How many seconds do I have? <laughs> we don't want to be here until midnight. <laughs> your most memorable learning. About ordinary life in America. Too many. <laughs> what is the most? Many food I like. Uh, when when I go home, I will not have pizza. Oh, oh, my community. Okay. All right. You learned about pizza. Yes. That's important. Okay. Then who has this? You have more to say? No. No. <laughs> who has this question? What American custom or tradition or a way of doing things surprised you the most when you came to the United States? Uh, yeah. That's my question. Okay. Yeah. All right, what's your answer? <laughs> yes, when I came here, the ways that you surprised me that wherever I, I meet you, you say hello to me and hug me. Oh. <laughs> that surprised me. Very much when I first came here. Oh, very good. Thank you. It's very different from Vietnam. Yeah, in Vietnam we don't have this custom. No hugging. No hugging. No. Especially the religious systems. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and this way, uh, this your, your way is just for my life. Oh. <laughs> okay, who's got this question? What English expression or slang word did you find most strange? <laughs> what English expression or slang word? I still remember uh, when I uh, first came here, I, sit, uh, I sat with the sister uh, uh, at the table uh, during the meal. And uh, I, uh, we learned, um, I learned uh, one expression in class. Uh, just heard like a, um, the professor just uh, mentioned about that, raining as uh, as the cast and 
dogs? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> That time, like, the class ended, so I, 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 I just, uh, because after that we have another class, so I had to hurry to the dining room to have a quick lunch, and I asked real quick, Sister, what does it mean, raining as the cats and dogs? <laughs> <laughs> so they just laugh, laugh, and said, is that like a, like, I, I just understand, like, a, oh, maybe the, uh, like, a, the, the, the circus, like, a, the, in the circus, they have oh. a cats and dogs to jump, jump down. <laughs> around the mother house did you enjoy the most? Whoever's got that question. Think. That would make all of you laugh because I think these questions uh, apply really well to me. Uh, when I, I think that it's not me uh, alone can answer that, but I think everybody would be the one who helped me to answer these questions. Because I uh, came here about seven years ago um, at a different status and um, the ministry and the job that I uh, were asked to do around the mother house at the, um, um, to be assistant of the housekeeper working around the house uh, daily from uh, after lunch until three o'clock and studying after work and um, I mean there are two different jobs um, over that mission. I would say the housekeeper is the first thing, and the one, the second thing is a English learner, because every single word that we learn from working uh, with the housekeeper is about uh, map, learning <laughs> and every single thing that we try to remember and put that into our mind and heart in order to open that up really well in order to. Uh, do all of that and is that's how we can learn English is a second language and um, I think that it was something that I really enjoy um, and uh, learn how to serve and uh, that's how I know all of you much better and uh, that was a uh, two year two valuable years that myself and also three of uh, my community members were with me during the time that I were here, that I have been living here with all of you. And uh, I would say that um, that is the enjoyable time uh, I had in my life. I will keep that up till the end of my life. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Pass, pass, pass. Can I pass? Pass. Not you yet. all pass. <laughs> Except you passed round one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> There is a smart question. How many rounds are there? Three. Three. Yes. Now this time though, we want everybody to answer the same questions. Okay? So just keep it moving. What is the name of your small community here at Ripa? Regina Jenny. <laughs> Would the sisters stand and be recognized for your wonderful ministry?
Now for each one of you, what was the topic of your master's thesis or project? And why did you choose that one? Okay, looks like Harvey's ready. My topic for the topic for my thesis named the suffering girl. Um, this year, I present the views of Motman about the suffering girl. I chose this topic because I want to find out an answer for my mission. When many people ask me why they have to suffer in their life. Candidates for the degree Master of Arts in Theology, Sister Hong T. Guo Nguyen. Sister, I don't write uh, the thesis, but I have uh, three books for uh, catechism, the lesson plans for level one, level two, and level three. Oh. And uh, each level, level one is uh, three to six. And uh, level two is six to nine years old, and six, level three is nine to twelve. And uh, each level, I have about level one. I have about uh, one hundred lessons, and level two about one uh, hundred twenty or thirty uh, lessons, and level three about one fifty lessons. And I I had to finish all of them. And uh, when I draw, I wrote it three books and I just learned a lot about this for how I can help the children and the people in their faith and in their spiritual life and how I can learn and love God and relationship with God. For the degree Master of Arts and Pastoral Studies, Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, Sister Maria Ian Pham, Order of Preachers. I have my uh, thesis, and uh, the topic uh, is the, from fear to wonder in Mark in Mark's to sea journeys, um, reading in the light of the pandemic. So uh, why I chose th this topic? Um, uh, like a, it was the be like a, I think uh, the the intention was uh, I have one course in Mark Gospel. And uh, I wrote the paper about uh, Mark the uh, three boat scenes, mm -hmm. and then um, at that time, that why I wrote this because in Vietnam, surely the first purpose, the first uh, reason is the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I I'm sure like uh, uh, it's every one of us okay, we have never ever experienced how how we are in how is we experience the chaos and on kind of uncertainty in our lives during the pandemic. And also, that time in Vietnam, yeah, they, we have a <coughs> flood of, uh, we suffer a lot of flood, uh, the flood, the Filipino flood. So Philippine flood uh, in Vietnam, and I just saw the photos and the news, and like a thousand, thousand people, they just lost their homes and their life. And it, it made, things more difficult when, because we are in the middle of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like uh, everyone <coughs> experienced fear, a lot of fear. And also, I also, at the same time, I look at my, this is my last year for my studying in uh, the US. And also I, I have, I share with my community a couple of times, like uh, I struggle a lot about fear. Because I don't know, I just laugh and just, you see me. I, I'm very really loud and smile, <laughs> and but the fear really big within myself, and I think that's the biggest enemy. I had to real struggle. I, I have been struggling a lot, so I, I chose that topic, and I just see because in the in the scene mark the marks two both scenes in the storm and also. Uh, uh, when uh, Jesus walk uh, on the water, so people real uh, the disciple how the disciple experience the fear uh, during the storm and also uh, those uh, those this situation. But Jesus, he was there. 
At the first portion, he was here. He was there with them, but he was sleeping. They thought he was absent, but the reality not. He's there. And the second boat, at first he was not there, but later on he appeared right in the middle when they were struggle. They were struggling. So I I, I just feel okay. Sometimes we really uh, like I myself. I I have a big fear. I struggle a lot. I have a lot of fear in the future and even the present time. But something I forgot, God is right here, right here with me. So that's the wonder. And even the wonder, God appears, God, the wonder is around myself, like in you, in uh, many kindness of other people during the pandemic. So for me, that, that's the way we really support and keep me moving. In, the, in my future uh, ministry or my future. Uh, so I, I just, uh, something make me think and also uh, help me to move on. For the degree Master of Arts in Theology, Sister Zoom T. Nock Holm. In order to fulfill my program pastoral study, I have to write an iteration paper. So I kind of pick out, draw out uh, from five courses, important courses. Uh, the, the theory, theology of five courses, and I make to my theology to apply in my future ministry. So I have to imagine what my future ministry is. Um, I think it's probably a formation, uh, probably be formator in my congregations. So I draw from that what I learned to apply it, how I can help uh, formate um, to grow in human. Uh, human aspect, spirituality, um, uh, psychology, uh, pastoral, how the, I help them to grow in all aspects according to uh, my congregation spirituality. So that is my topic that iterates what I learned in my future. Uh, when in my future is formation and um, that's why I also in order to fulfill that uh, I apply for Creighton to continue the program in spirituality uh, spiritual direction that uh, our congregation haven't has any sister who change in that area uh, so even though I'm not tired of studying <laughs> but uh, maybe that is the calling for me to fulfill the ministry that my uh, my correlations uh, wish to have. For the degree Master of Arts in Pastoral Studies, Sister Hong Bik T. Nguyen. Um, I have been away um, mother house for and all of you for one year in order to do my pastoral ministry, pastoral year um, and CPE program at the same time. Um, I, I have been a residential minister at uh, Georgetown University um, to live with the student and be there in present with all, the, all of them during the pandemic. Uh, still developing serious. Uh, I was there, um, make myself available anytime in order to let the student come over and um, they would share with me what they are struggling during their lifetime of studying. Uh, they are struggling because of their family problems, family issue, studying issue, and also um, pandemic issue as well. That affected all of them, the student, they are still very young of age, 
they are still struggling with what they are going to do in the future and after they graduate what they going to do and um, yeah just I mean um, they came to me in order to share with me all of that I was there listening to them and um, could be able to share with them what I have learned over here in the US uh, one thing that I want I want I just want to make here is just um, I talked to them that I'm I'm still shuffling at Wells as a foreigner student being here in the US um, I know nothing but I want to challenge myself in order to um, do the best I can but one thing I told them that uh, at the very beginning of, of our celebration tonight uh, you you sister said that you don't have to do that by yourself if you cannot answer the question you can ask the other sister they can help you you are not out there alone everybody stay uh, together standing together and holding hand together together in order to help each other I told the student like that and they said they at least I comfort them in the way of having um, encouragement statement in order to help them uh, to understand that they are not alone uh, because they don't they thought that they would do by themselves. Yeah, for sure, they are strong and healthy enough in order to do what they want. But the good thing is that they can do much better with the other help. Um, that was, I was there with a student. Um, and a, another job, I mean, another ministry that I have uh, have done uh, in my um, during my pastoral year is I, I have finished my uh, clinical pastoral education at Georgetown University Hospital. There, I think that for what I learned from Aquinas is the theology. It's all about the theology. It's all about up here. But look at those people. Look at the patient, all of them. What do I have? What do I need to have? All about heart, all about love and care. And um, I learned a lot from them. No, I'm not there to, to give them something, but they give me more. They give me a lot, um, especially um, I think that is it is a very valuable um, valuable years that I could serve them during the pandemic. Um, I put all of that into my action, and I believe that what I have, it is it. Um, I don't know, but it is something that I I keep that um, um, keep that in my life and bring that home with me. For the degree Master of Divinity, Sister Lin Tui Do. Really, sisters, what a wonderful celebration of your work here, your life with us. What an inspiration the words you just shared with us are. Makes us so proud. I think they graduated. Okay, my dear sisters, as Sister Elise has announced, you have successfully completed the requirements that we as School Sisters of Notre Dame would have asked of you. And we want you to know that your superiors will get the word that you will be <laughs> departing from here and our hearts will be sad. But we can tell them that you, their sisters, and a part of us will continue together to spread God's message and God's loving care to everyone we meet. So your challenge before you is quite large. But, as we said, you never walk alone. You walk together with your God and with your community and all of the friends that surround you. So God bless. And now at this time, we will be announcing your names and you will come forth and you will be presented with your certificate of completion.
sister Fong T. Kim. Dear sisters, you have your certificate, your diplomas, you have your tassels, and now you have wisdom glasses. <laughs> if you can tell me what those glasses say, I know you are definitely a graduate. Do you have an idea? Grad. Grad, Grad. yes, congratulations. <laughs> well, sisters, You've had an Aquinas graduation, but this is the real SSND celebration of your graduation. Congratulations. And sisters, we're going to join them in prayer as they stand before us.
my dear sisters, you stand in another open doorway of life. We invite you to take a deep breath and deliberately unite yourself with the Holy One present here with you. I ask that you call to mind the inner qualities you bring with you as you prepare to move into your new ministries. And if you can extend your arms outward before us, I invite you to do that the best you can. <coughs> Just take your arms and open them. As you extend your arms, we send forth our loving support to you. You have been an integral part of our lives during the time you were here with us. As you attended your classes, you not only gave yourself to your studies, but you extended your helpful service in assisting us here at Teresa Center in so many ways. Your spirit of self-giving has been remarkable and greatly appreciated. And for this, we, your sisters, are forever grateful. I now invite you to close your hand over your heart. That same loving gratitude and goodness from us is being sent back to you. May the goodness dwelling within you bless the lives of those who come to meet you each day. May our God help you to share that love with all. Keep the door of your heart open. Be ready to receive, and you will always find the support needed from your God and your community. See how spacious your inner self is. How much room there is for filling. So I ask you to take another deep breath and breathe in the goodness of the Holy One. Fill your heart with the beauty, richness, and power of Christ's love. We give you thanks for the Holy One, for this beautiful love that is all ready to fill you and your being today and all the days ahead. May your blessing for Christ be a presence in all the ministries you find for yourself. May you give generously and patiently for your time, energy, and talents when they are needed, and receive generously the assistance that others offer to you. May you find a trusted companion who journeys compassionately with you, tending to your spirit as you seek comfort and clarity for your life. May you always remember that your ministry finds its source in God, whose power working through you can do more than you can ask or imagine. And our sisters, we ask that this graduation invites you to keep all doors open, follow your heart, and live what you believe, and witness who you are. Amen. Amen. And now, my friends, we are going to cut the cake. We're going to enjoy the cake, and we're going to enjoy one another's company. So you may put your things down on the table, and you may come and be first in line. You are used to being last, but you know scripture says the last shall be first. 
and the first shall be last. And today, you are the first. So please, put your, your gifts on your table. <laughs> yes, you may. She's a Dominican. She's a oh, she's preacher. preacher. Oh, yes, Sita, I do tonight you are really take our hearts. I think all of us stand here, even we smile, but our tear is not out. Because yesterday in the homily, the father said, uh, when uh, you believe, you can proclaim the, the gospel for the people and all about witness and love. And now, today, I see really you from you all. You are really a good example and good witness of the gospel for God, love and compassion and everything. You make us better, have a better life and you help us a lot in your love, help and support and everything you done for us in different ways. We cannot tell everything, the name here, we can name here. But I think all of us recognize your love and everything you done for us. We love you so much and we cannot say everything now. Just say thank you so much and we keep you all in our heart and in our brain. And I think we, if we go home, we will bring you home. We hope with you. <laughs> off your glasses and wisdom. <laughs> I am sitting in the middle of your party. Maybe we need some more big up in
the, the light of Jesus for one another. So thank you, and God bless. And may we, the SSMDs, take all of the gifts you've shared with us and put those into practice ourselves. Amen. Amen. Cheers.